Father God, we just thank you tonight just for this privilege and this opportunity to come and to study the word on tonight. We thank you for the spirit of God being here that will help us gain insight and revelation of the word into our lives. We thank you, Father, for teaching us just how to live in this day. And so we praise you for the insight and revelation that we have been receiving. And we just give you honor and glory tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So this is actually part six of learning to live in this day. Now, we have, uh, last week we left off really we, with questions, and we, we said there were four questions we, we, we were going to give you. We only got through two of them. And so the first question last week was, why do we struggle with living in this day? Why do we struggle uh, living in this day? And so we gave you Hebrews 11.6. It says, which says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And we said that uh, one reason, one of the reasons that we struggle with living this day is because we did not see God as being the rewarder of our lives. That, that so many other things we perceive to be a rewarder. That, uh, and that was an indication by the fact that we are faithful to certain things then more so than we are to God. Last week we said we, you know, the church, you know, is asking you to be here, what, five, six hours, five hours a week, mm -hmm. and your job requires you to be there uh, 40 plus hours, and yet we can easily do 40 plus for yeah. our jobs, but we can only give, we struggle with giving God five. Yeah. That tells us where we perceive the rewarder. We perceive our job as being the source and provision of our lives, and as such, uh, we, we don't really seek him. Because whatever you see as the rewarder, that's what you go after. Mm -hmm. You make allowances for it, you make sacrifices for it, you make plans for it. We make plans for being at work, don't we? We, yeah. we, we make arrangements, the car breaks down, or we make a plan to get to work. Yeah. Because we understand, i got to get paid. So, so mm -hmm. we are very sacrificial when it comes to those things we perceive as a rewarder to us. Or a benefit to us. So that, that's an indication that God is not our, we're not perceiving him as being the, the true reward of our life because of the, and, and I don't care what anybody says, all I got to do is look at what a person commits to. Uh, I mean, and, and that's, not to, that's not to put anybody down or you know, think less of them, but that's just the reality. You know, it's like the husband who says, honey, I love you, but he never comes home mm -hmm. and won't pay bills and won't work. And, you know, I, I don't care what you say, God, I can, all I can do is look at what you do. And so, you know, and that's true with God. You know, God's not impressed by our lips, sir. He's impressed by our actions right. that are motivated and moved by a heart that truly loves him. And so we said that's why one of the reasons that people struggle with living in this day. Because if God is not the rewarder and your job is, then, then what's going to happen is you're relying on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, those jobs are very finicky. Mm -hmm. They can be yeah. real finicky. But, but, <laughs> but thank God, if, if you understand that God is your rewarder, the Bible says he is the same yesterday today and forever. He'll never change. Come on, he, he don't do layoffs. He don't do job cuts. You know, I mean, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is the rewarder of our lives. And, 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 and again, he, it says here in Hebrews um, 11 uh, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you have to be diligent where church is concerned. One of the things I always say I did growing up was I never, I, I never took a job that would that would require me to work on Sunday, mm -hmm. because I knew I needed diligence. Well, one we, it was drilled into us. My dad, as kids, said, "Look, let me tell you something, boy. You working on Sunday? I'm coming down there." <laughs> well, I didn't want dad come down to my job telling my mm -hmm. boss because my boy don't work on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I appreciate him taking that stand because honestly, I can honestly say that since the age of 19, I've only worked one Sunday. Since then, one. And, and the only time I really worked that one was because God said so. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And, uh, and so, but I have been diligent about putting God first, you know, uh, not just with my job, but even with finances, uh, uh, honoring Him, you know, honoring Him in the tithes and offering. All that, because see, when I'm trusting Him, I don't have to struggle. All right. I, don't have to, I don't have to be worried, I don't have to be anxious, I don't have to be fearful. See, whenever you're anxious and worried and fearful, that's an indication you're not diligently going after him. Because yeah. the Bible says, perfect love will cast out fear. Because fear has torment. So if you are tormented today by any circumstance, situation in your life, 
that is an indication that somewhere on the line you stop being diligent and pursuing him. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons we said people struggle. You know, people. Uh, <coughs> so, so what were some answers you guys gave me last week about why people struggle in in living with with living in this day? What did you guys tell me last week? Because they were anxious. Oh, yeah. Said no peace. No peace. Unbelief. Uh, uh, Sister Janelle said lack of faith. Yeah, that's a big struggle. That's something that creates struggles in our life. So, all right. So, now, let me, uh, here, here's, what, here's what I wrote down. I'm, I'm going to kind of go through this kind of quickly. I want to spend all my time on these two questions again. Uh, but this is what I wrote. I said, is it because we feel that as adults, we are responsible to take care of ourselves, and God is a side note when everything else fails? That is, that's, boy, everybody run to God when everything else fails. Mm -hmm. Which means you saw everything else as the rewarder mm -hmm. before him. Mm -hmm. And then he's basically, basically a last ditch effort. This is, and I said, that's, this, that is what society has taught us. If you can't do it on your own, something is wrong with you. Thus we misunderstand and abuse the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And so grace then becomes something whereby... Uh, it's always where God is, we want God to bail us out. That's true. And that's really what ultimately is happening. We, we want God to bail us out all the time. But, but grace isn't just with the intent to bail you out. God, the grace of God is there to produce a change in your life. Amen. To Amen. change you. To, to, help you. to help you grow in your faith. To show you how it's done. So that you can do the same thing. That's what parents do, don't we? There are certain things we do for our children up to a point, and we show them how it's done, but then eventually we expect them to do, learn how to do it and do it themselves. Amen. Thank you for sitting on the front row, Brother Calvin. It's so good to see you, sir. Good to see you. I've been missing you and your brother. You and Chase, where y'all been hiding out at? Y'all been mad at me or something? No? Okay. Love you both. All right, question number two we ask. We ask, how do you define being an adult? How do you define being an adult? Because, because the first thing people think as an adult, I'm responsible, I can't be responsible. But then Jesus said this about being an adult. Look what he said in Matthew 18, 1, we read this last week. He said, at, the, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? <laughs> now, don't we always perceive greatness with statue or position or mm -hmm. some form of power or mm -hmm. some level of influence, and we perceive that as somebody that's got it going on. But look what Jesus said to them. Uh, verse 2. He said, He called a little child and had him stand among them. Then he said to them, I can guarantee this truth. Mm -hmm. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Think about that. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. now, now, what I... What, what I I said, there's really, I, I see that as two part. That we know that the kingdom of heaven is within us as believers. But I believe that when we don't become as children, in terms of our, our willingness to believe God, and take him at his word, and do what his word says, uh, we will not see a true manifestation of God, of heaven, through us. Mm -hmm. We won't see his glory rise up. We won't see his power rise and work through us. We won't walk in the peace of God that he intended for us to have until we become like children. Because children are very simple in their belief, aren't they? Mm -hmm. You tell them something, they take it to the bank. Amen. They're very simple. They're very simplistic. But somewhere along the line, society told us we have to be adults. And we have to be responsible. And by doing so, we ultimately shifted the responsibility upon ourselves. And that's why God becomes a last-ditch effort, because after we did everything we know to do, now we cry to God. But the Bible tells us that we're the, the just shall live by faith. And faith begins where the will of God is known. The will of God is the word of God. So that every day I wake up as a child, I take God's word for what he says, and I just walk it out every day. Mm. And that's uncomplicated. But religion complicates things. Uh, the society can com complicates everything because, you know, you, we've heard the saying, you made your bed, you got to sleep in it. <laughs> That's an adult thing that you say to a person, say you're not being an adult and you need to be responsible. Mm -hmm. 
But God tells us to be like, but Jesus tells us to be like children. If you want, if you want the kingdom of heaven, see the kingdom of heaven, you got to be like a child. Now, is he saying sit around sucking your thumb, wearing a diaper, mm -hmm. sitting drinking out a bottle? Of course not. But what he is saying is that childlike faith that just believes what their father said. Trusting him as a child, trusting a parent. So. Yeah, I mean, they just, you know, I mean, them, children, uh, when they're like babies to <clears throat> five, six, they just kind of, you know, rely on mom and daddy. You know, and uh, but you don't think that the natural response of a child, though, as they begin to grow, there are some things that you've done for them for so long, and they've watched you do it. They come to a place where they want to do it for themselves, mm -hmm. and that's not. And some people are fearful of that because they feel like they're losing control of their child. But really, the, the natural progression of a child is to watch and observe, and then emulate what you did. So then they're still living, listen, they're still living by your guidance, mm -hmm. but your guidance has become a part of their life. Mm -hmm. So that they don't have to come to you, but now it's part of them and they go do it themselves. That's what God wants to bring us. Listen, there, there is nothing better about living in this day when you know your father will take care of you. Amen. When you, re when you really are convinced of that. You know, it's easy to say, well, I trust the Lord, I trust God. He say that. But, but when, those, when those storms of life hit, and, and, and then we, I listen to what people say, I'm like, hold up, you're not trusting the Lord. You got to catch yourself. Remember I told you, you got to reel in your thoughts sometimes. You got to catch yourself sometimes. Mm -hmm. so hold up, now I need to get back to my child. Like, faith. I just believe what you say. I don't know how you're going to work it out. I don't understand how you're going to work it, but I know this, you're going to work it out. <laughs> Come on, if God, if God needs to make an elephant fly on your behalf, he will make an elephant fly on your behalf. <laughs> Well, he ain't never been done. Good, you'll be the first. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously. Because you tell a child an elephant can fly, and you tell them that from the age of one, they, they'll believe, grow and believe, elephant can fly. It's in the class and argue with the elephants can fly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they eat that flat there is that flat. My daddy told me elephants can fly. And they'll believe it. Until some, something actually validates that that's not true. Mm -hmm. But their childlike faith just believes it. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was the second question we had. How do you define being an adult? Uh, really, in the world perspective, is, is, is being, taking care of yourself. In God's, in God's kingdom, he says, don't be an adult, be a child. And let your childlike faith guide you through life. And again, we're not talking about being irresponsible. But we're talking about believing what he says. Taking him at his word. If he says, by his stripes you heal, just believe it. Amen. Uh, yes, I am. He says you're free. For whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Just say, yes, I am. Well, I just don't feel it. I just keep doing the same old thing. Old. Childlike faith. Just believe it. <laughs> and that's what, listen, you declare it till you see it. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you that I'm free. I thank you that nothing holds me bound except your will. And that's not complicated. Come on, amen. But see, it's, here's the problem. Sometimes it is so simple that we miss it. Because in adulthood, now the, what doesn't being an adult tell us life gets real complicated? Mm -hmm. It gets burdensome, you know, as an adult. But for us, as believers, the Bible says we are in the world, but we're not of the world. So just because the world adopts that philosophy doesn't mean we have to adopt it. No, I trust God. God got me. Mm. People say, what you going to do? I'm going to believe God. And then whatever God tells me to do, I'm going to do it. But that, just, that just don't seem real responsible. Because in their mind, people have what? Have the idea that being an adult means you work out your own problems. Because if you mess it up, you got to fix it. And then think about this. Did we mess up? Did man, humanity mess up? God didn't say, well, y'all got to fix it. Y'all got to fix it. Y'all messed it up. No, he didn't. The Bible says that while we were yet enemies, God sent forth his son to pay a price for us that we could not pay. Mm -hmm. Christ died. The Bible says while we were yet enemies, Christ died for us. He died for us while we were enemies because we messed up. And aren't you, now see, isn't that really opposite of how society view adulthood? adulthood? 
It's totally opposite of how we function. Again, we're not talking about sitting around sucking your thumb and wearing diapers or anything like that, but, but it's just simply believing what he says. Well, how'd that go work out? And people ask, how'd that go work out? Yeah. Ain't my job. Yeah. Let, let me ask you something. When you tell, and we did this last week. I said, when you think about this, you ever tell your child, y'all going somewhere? You ever tell your child you're going somewhere mm -hmm. for vacation? Say, you say, anybody, will y'all tell your children you're going somewhere on vacation? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, y'all went to the beach, right? Mm -hmm. You went to the beach. Now, when, when you told Laura she was going to the beach, I'm, I always use y'all because y'all don't got kids in here, so y'all well, got kids too. <laughs> but you may tell your children about vacation, right? You said something. Are you going somewhere? Right? Right? Now, now, let me ask you something. Did your children, when you told them that you were going somewhere, did they get online and try to check it out? Did they get online and say, I wonder how much gas they could call it? That's like you're not to calculate, calculate how much it's going to cost. And they didn't do any of that, did they? They sat back and just waited for the day to go on vacation. Mm -hmm. They didn't worry about how, who, how, how the room will get, get paid for, did they? Say they didn't ask God, well, how are we going to eat? How we? They didn't ask nothing. They, they, they asked nothing. They, they, just, they just got their stuff and they went. Mm -hmm. And that's how God wants us to believe him. Amen. Try to figure it out. We get we, we get, we get, we get and try to figure it out, don't we? Mm -hmm. How God going to bless me? How you going to do it? You know, I, you know I got this knee. You know the day's approaching. I got this knee. I need Like you don't know that. Children don't do that. Children need lunch money. They get the day. I need some lunch money. They don't go, Mom, I wonder where mom's gonna, uh, mom and dad going to get that lunch money from. Mm -hmm. I wonder where, where, where it got. They don't, they don't care. They don't even think about it. They just roll, don't they? They just take it, receive. And that's how God, the children, they just receive. That's how God tells us we have to be with him. Just believe it and receive from it. Don't try to earn it. Don't try to work for it. You just receive it. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to calculate it. And just, just receive and if there's anything you need to do, Dad will tell you. Mm -hmm. You need to pack your clothes. <laughs> right? They tell you what you need to do. But we think sometimes as an adult, we think, let, God, let me tell you what I need to do so you'll understand. Mm -hmm. And God says, look, he looks at you and he's, he's like, it's okay. <laughs> Just be foolish if you want to. And stress yourself out. But if I tell you you're going, I already got it covered. And again, this is, this, is, this is not us just doing what we want to do. This is us following his lead. All right? So it's not just like, you know, I'm going to do whatever and the God will take care of me. No, it's me following his lead, following his direction, following his instruction. And as I do, uh, he takes care of me. All right. If he say build it, you build it. If he say give it, you give it. You don't go out and try to figure it out. Now, I, I struggled. You know, I struggled the first time. He told me to get something really big. I thought was really big in my mind. You know, you want me to give up? Well, you know, we only got this much in the account. And, and, and I mean, I, I went through that. You know, and, and God says, I didn't tell you to do all that. Ain't your money anyway. Okay. <laughs> but you know, I did what he said. And, and God blessed us. So it's not my job to figure it out. It's not my job. It's not. It's not even my. It's not even my job to even worry about the amount I give. All right. All right. It's not. Because if God, listen, if God can't can't handle us giving away five thousand dollars because He say so, we in trouble. Mm -hmm. Seriously. I mean seriously. If we if we can't handle that, that blows out my. If you can't obey Him with five thousand dollars, what do you think will give you a ten million dollar ministry? Mm -hmm. If 5,000 make you stay up at night, lay the wake at night, but that's all right. <laughs> no, ain't all right. <laughs> no, no. It is not all right. So, so, we, so these, anyway, these are some of the questions we were asking. Who, why do we struggle with things with living in this day? Number two, how do we define being an adult? Here's number three. This one we didn't get to. This is where we left off. Man, I took up a whole lot of time doing that. Uh, number three, how do we define being responsible? How do we define it? Because, again, society tells us a whole different way of being responsible. And, and, I'm, and it's, let me say this. I'm not saying we shouldn't be responsible. But we better find out what God holds us responsible for before we go calling ourselves responsible. Because a lot of things we call ourselves responsible over and for aren't things God called us to be responsible for. Ooh, that's good, isn't it? 
And we struggle with that. So, so how do we, uh, let me ask you a question since we, we opened it and it's having a good conversation tonight. Uh, how do you define being responsible? Just, just off the top of your head, the first thing that comes to mind. Don't try to get me a religious answer either. <laughs> you take care of the things daily that you need to take have care done. Thing, yeah, they can take care of the things you need to do. Anybody else got to look for being responsible? Oh, here you go. Sister Janelle just said controlling things. It's, and uh, that's true because when we when we when we give our, make ourselves responsible, we feel the need to be in control. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. We feel the need to control it. We feel the need to to, to, to dominate it. We feel the need to, to make sure everything go according to our plan. Mm -hmm. And we think when things listen, and when things don't go according to our plan, we feel like we have failed. Which means you you failed in your mindset. You convinced yourself that you failed at being responsible. Y'all, that's good because a lot of people live there. A lot of people live there. That they, they, they don't know how to handle failure in any form, from job to relationship to parenting. Uh, they don't know how to handle failure. Because we're a win-win society. It's been drummed into us from you gotta win, you gotta win, you gotta win. Yep. And you're the one and you and you're always the one that's responsible for winning. Mm -hmm. Because isn't that what it means to be responsible? Well I win or lose, it's all on me. And yet God says the, the flip of that, God says he he, he he made us victorious. He made us more than conquerors. So we're trying to trying to convince ourselves to be something in and of ourselves when in fact God has already made us that. The Bible says we are seated in heavenly places far above all principality, powers, mights, and dominions. We, 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 we put our confidence in the 401k and the pension. And, and let me say this, I am not saying don't have a 401k and don't have a pension. If your job is doing a 401k plan, let me give some wisdom. If your job is doing a 401k plan and they're matching that 6%, take the free money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's free money. Take it. It's free. Just make it a, make it a little put in. Let them match it. It's free money. Can't, cannot hurt you. All right? So, so, so I'm not saying you can't do that. But what I'm saying is don't put your confidence in that. Because it could be an Enron situation. Mm -hmm. Where people think they have something there, then when it's all said, then they find they have nothing. And people jumping out windows and killing themselves and taking their lives and crying and you know, don't and, and stressing out and falling apart. No. When you got God, you got everything. So so it's good to have it, but don't put your confidence in it. Because what if God said, I want you to take that picture, I want you to sow it. Amen. See people are like, what? <laughs> I need to. I need to go pray about that. <laughs> now, listen is, and isn't it true? When we want something, we don't feel the need to go pray for it. Mm -hmm. We just go do it, though. Mm -hmm. We, when we want to eat, we don't go. Well, let me go pray to the Lord for me or not. Let me go pray. No, we know we going to eat some. No. But why is it we always get spiritual? <laughs> Come on. When God starts talking about us doing stuff <laughs> and giving finances and giving time, oh, I need to pray about when I need work at church. Really? The Bible says, find whatever your hands can do and do with all your might. He has already spoken. The Lord tell you to give five hundred dollars. I, I, I need to pray about that. The Bible says, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, running over men and give it back into your bosom. Yeah, but now you don't want to be foolish. You don't want to be foolish. Come, isn't that what people say? They, 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 and they think that's spiritual. No, it's your flesh rising up, and you you are thinking, I am responsible for myself. Say that. And if I do this, and if it doesn't work out, I don't know what I'm going to do. Come on, y'all. And you know how many people live there? A lot of people live there. They live there in that mindset. I'm responsible for me. But we're not. We're Listen, we are not responsible for ourselves. We are responsible to be obedient. And in our obedience... The Father takes care of us. Mm -hmm. Come on, we read Matthew mm -hmm. to you. Take no thought, saying, "What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Uh, 
Wherewithal shall we be clothed? He said, he said this is what the Gentiles see. Because your father in heaven know that you have need of all these things. He said, but first seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and that all these things shall be added unto you. Then he tacks on, fear not, little flock. It is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Because he knew that he knew that would make people afraid. Why? When you say, don't worry about it, what? Don't worry. I got bills to pay. I got children. God don't want me to neglect the little children now. I got children. God know you got children. <laughs> God know you got children. Like he doesn't know that. See, but here's what you made yourself to be responsible. When in fact, he calls you to be obedient. Mm -hmm. And in your obedience, he takes care of everything that concerns you. Let me ask you something. Some of the disciples were married. They had family. Amen. Peter had a mother-in-law, which means somebody was there waiting on him. Right? Mm -hmm. somebody, he was, somebody had somebody. And, and, and yet Jesus called him off his job mm -hmm. to leave it all behind mm -hmm. and says, follow, follow me. <laughs> what did he say? Shut down the business. And follow me. Here was the tax collector sitting at the table doing business, probably making pretty good money. People didn't like it, but he was doing making pretty good money. Say that. But 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 Jesus comes along and says, "Follow me. Shut down the shut what? Shut down my business and follow you." They didn't start saying, "Well, now you know, Lord, I got family. I got these little children at home, and they gotta eat too." Isn't that true? They didn't. None of them said that. They heard him. They received him, and they went. Wasn't one a doctor? Luke, the physician? Huh? Yeah, I think Luke was. Matthew, Mark, Luke, Luke, Luke. No, Luke, Mike. Luke, yeah, Luke, what, Luke, Luke came later, though, didn't he? Or Luke, um, traveled with Paul. Yeah, 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 Luke traveled with Paul. But he had to travel with Paul, so I mean, he had to leave his profession behind, too. Mm -hmm. They still all left their profession to follow, to follow the will of God. Why did Jesus send up when he was with his disciples? Why did he send them out of twos and told, don't take nothing extra with you? Don't take no extra shoes, don't take no extra sand, don't take no money back. Don't even take a money, don't even take a money back. Don't take no credit card with you. Just go. It's to prove that he would provide for their care and well-being. Come on, say it loud again. Say that real loud, D. It's to prove that uh, Jesus would provide for their care and well-being. That Jesus would, would, would take, provide and take care of their well-being. He, he, now, if he's the same yesterday, Today and forever, Amen. that means if he calls us to something, mm -hmm. he has to do the same thing. Amen. Yeah, but you don't understand what my needs are. He does. <laughs> I can't make it if I don't. Again, you're what you're doing. You're being responsible from a worldly perspective. Mm -hmm. Being Listen, you being responsible, you being responsible is doesn't require you to disobey God. Amen. Being responsible means you actually, if you're really responsible, <coughs> you first thing you do is obey God. Mm -hmm. Well, I would tie, but I can't afford to this month. Because I got lights and I got bills and I got children. <laughs> children <laughs> need lights. No. So then what you doing? You're making yourself responsible. Mm -hmm. And if you are responsible, what you just told God, he's not. Thus, you have now taken the responsibility of taking care of yourself. Many people have gotten in trouble financially because they, they, they felt the need to take care of themselves. When in fact, they should have been trusting God. Yeah, right here. <laughs> there are many things. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and we've all done that. I remember the one time, man, I didn't honor the Lord and attack, and I made up all these excuses. I'm married, and I got to take care of these bills, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I had, I had a list of them. Reasons why I couldn't tie this month. In that one month, listen, someone stole my hubcaps off my car. <laughs> they stole my license plate off my car. All in one month. And then I had to go down, go, I had just gotten my tags in my car too. So I had to go back down and pay another half fee to get a new tag in my car. So I still lost a lot of money. And I'm driving, and not only that, then I'm driving and my car just starts shaking. <laughs> like I was in a tank. And I'm just crying, I oh, don't know what's going on. What is happening to me? And man, the Spirit of God spoke my heart. He said, because the devourer is not repeated. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do some fast repenting. Yeah. I did, man. I repented, man. That's why stuff started happening. 
you know, because I, I knew better. I had been taught, I knew better. But I saw, I, but what did I do? I became responsible. And I started trusting in my ability rather than the Lord's ability. I know the baby's cute, baby. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> focus, focus. <laughs> Landon, your cuteness has stolen the show. It did. It really did that day. You was just like it. I, I knew I lost. I had to drag it back in. Put it back in, baby. Put it back in. Cuteness will still be there. All right. Listen to this. Uh, so look, look, look at Luke. Man, goodness. Luke 12, 16. Look at Luke 12, 16. Again, the question is, how do we define being responsible? Luke 12, 16. And this is a parable that Jesus spake. I'm going to read it for the sake of time. Uh, he says, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful, brought forth plentifully. And he reasoned within himself, saying, See, this is what we do, don't we? Mm -hmm. We reason within ourselves, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no, nowhere to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns, and build greater. And there will I bestow all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, I have much good laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, be merry. But God said unto him, Thou foolish one, this night is thy soul required of thee. And the things which you have prepared, whose shall they be? So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Glory to God. See, he was not rich towards God. Now, now, how are we rich towards God? We're rich towards God through our obedience. That's what makes us rich towards God. When we obey him, when we trust him, when we have childlike faith and we say, Lord, I, I believe what you told me, that if you can't take care of me, nobody can. Mm -hmm. So what we really want to be is self-reliant. And it means not having to depend on anyone to make it. We see ourselves as the source of our own provision, and it is by our own efforts and strength. Your trust in yourself, and when you, your trust is in yourself, and when self fails, we condemn ourselves and push ourselves harder to succeed. And don't we do that? We beat ourselves, and when we beat ourselves up, we beat ourselves up, and we think, if I just beat myself up enough, I'll never do this again, and I'll get back on my feet, and I'll be better. Mm -hmm. It's called self-condemnation. This is, we also expect others to live up to the expectation we have, we have of ourselves, even though we aren't meeting them either. And, and I've seen many parents do their children like that. There are so many parents who never made it as an athlete, but they push their children to be athletes. Mm -hmm. Vicariously through. Yeah, I'm trying to live vicariously through. You know, if I can't make it, you won't make it. Are you, are, you, are you stupid? Are you foolish to really do that to your child when, when all that pushing didn't help you? Now this is, we, we aren't responsible for our own provision. Being responsible leads to worry. We live by faith, trusting in what the Lord is leading us to do. That's how we live every day. Just give up every day with the idea, Lord, today I'm set aside to serve you. And it doesn't have to be grand things that we make it out to be, you know, and huge things. It's just the little things that we don't do. Like just being kind to people, encouraging mm -hmm. people, you know, being loving, you know, listening to what the Lord said when he says bless somebody. I mean, little things like that that we don't do. The Bible says the little fox that says for the vine. Little things that we don't, we, we, we think it's these big, huge, grand things that we don't do. It's the little stuff we don't do. Like just smiling at people and being polite to people and treating people right. You know, just little things like that that we Say don't that. do. And then we wonder, you know, well, why am I getting blessed? Well, you're not doing a little thing. Amen? You got to do those small things. The, the everyday things. It's the everyday things that we need to learn how to do. We're waiting for these big, huge, grand dreams to show up, but we won't even do the daily things, the simple things that God is calling us to do every single day. To just live by faith every day. Mm. And, 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 listen, and, 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 and religion has so messed us up where faith is concerned, where we think we just live blindly. 
I just want to use the term blind faith. Faith is never blind. Faith is always based on what God has revealed to you and what he has spoken to you. If, if God hasn't revealed anything, it's not faith. It's wishful thinking. But faith is always birthed on what God has spoken and revealed. So if he hasn't spoken and revealed anything, then it, you, know, it's not, you can't have faith in it. All right, so this is, now, oh my goodness. Now here's my, here's my, here's my fourth question. So I hope that helped you, uh, help you to define being responsible. Just be obedient to God. Number four, how do you define rich? Because this is a huge problem for people in the body of Christ. They define rich by the house they live in. And they think that they don't get the, if they don't get the big house, then, they, then somewhere they miss God. You know, I am, and, I, and I can honestly say this as, uh, as having grown up in a three-bedroom house with seven brothers and sisters. I don't ever remember necessarily being unhappy. Say that. I don't. I remember having a wonderful time as a child. We, we, see, th th this is when we know we all out of whack because we start looking at things like things are the, are the, are the answer to our children's happiness. No, love is the answer to your children's happiness. Amen. That's the answer to your children's happiness, to know that they're loved, that they're precious, that they're valuable, that you believe in them, that you encourage them. You can give your children things all, all day long, and they still lose their mind, do crazy stuff. And people believe that. They're like, oh, if I don't have that, I need, oh, I, my kids got to have this, this, and this. That's why I don't understand people who live on welfare buying their children Nikes. Like, that's going to make them better children. It just makes them more irresponsible. Say that. It just makes them irresponsible because what they can say is, we can't afford it, but I'm going to get it anyway. So they grow up with this attitude, well, I can't afford it, but I'm going to get it anyway. Mm -hmm. Thus you create debt in their life. And you, they learn the principle of debt very early. Mm -hmm. And I thank God I didn't have mama, a mama and daddy that did that to us. Nope, can't buy those, can't buy those, nope, can't get no Nikes. We got some BB buddies for you. Hey. <laughs> Everybody remember BB buddies? Yeah, some kids and all that stuff yourself. I, you know what? I made it to adulthood. I'm not all scarred because I won't be buddy. Come on. I mean, seriously, I'm not scarred. Hand me down shoes, hand me down pants. I mean, oh, really? you know, I mean, come on. I mean, I'm not sitting here today like, oh, this, my childhood was so horrible because I had to wear some BB buddies and some <laughs> second hand pants from my brothers. <laughs> I, I don't I didn't, I didn't, I don't I don't remember life that way. Life was good as a kid. I mean there were aspects that were really good, you know, that I really enjoyed. <coughs> Amen. You know, aspects I didn't like, but you know, but for the most part part of my home life, I, I had a good time at home. Played, you know, man get Christmas crawl around, man, you get the big old box, man, but and the box was a spaceship. I mean it was just good. And I, I never thought about what I didn't have. I, I didn't. I, I was I was thankful for what I did have. Say that. You know, and so I mean I, I think sometimes we get so convoluted and, and warped in our perception of what it means to be rich. Well, sense of belonging and family worth more than a million dollars. You know, and, and, I'm, and I'm not saying God don't want you to have things, but not at the expense that you th you define yourself and try to define your children's personal perception of value by things. All right, so how do you how do you define rich? <coughs> well, look at Revelation chapter two. Well, now Revelation chapter three. I ain't gonna have time to go into it like I want to. I, we'll hit Revelation Revelation chapter. I have five questions. I have five questions. Okay. Revelation chapter three, and we'll look at verse number. We'll start number verse number fourteen. The very, Revelation, the very last book in the Bible. The very last book at the back of the Bible. At the very back. All the way to the back. It's the last book in the old, last book in the New Testament. You see Revelation. The one a lot of people don't get to. Revelation <laughs> chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. And we're going to look at verse number 14. Revelation chapter 3. Verse out there. Verse 14. Here's what it says. 
And this is Jesus Christ speaking to the church of Laodicea. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodicea is right. These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Mm -hmm. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. <laughs> now this is, because thou sayest, <coughs> I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knoweth not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, mm -hmm. and naked. Mm -hmm. Though in the natural sense they look like they were rich. Mm -hmm. Jesus, now you, you, you poor. <laughs> he said, you're wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. That don't sound well very prosperous. Though they had the things, mm -hmm. but they didn't have him. Amen. Amen. They were, they, they were sold out on their riches, but they weren't sold out. <coughs> That's why he said you look warm. Mm -hmm. Now you think about that. You, you, you raise a child in riches and a lukewarm attitude towards God, and guess what you go get out of your children? Oh, goodness. A, a, a child who will be more than, more than probably less than lukewarm, yeah. and who will depend upon his riches. Mm -hmm. Because wherever you, as a parent, wherever you place your value, and that's what you display, that's where your, your children will place their value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If your value is living in the hood and having Nikes, <laughs> that's what your children will display. They go live on welfare, but try to dress the best. We have gold around their neck and don't have a pot to pee in. Say that. Say that. I mean, come on. Have a car that's have a car that's like jacked up, souped up, hooked up, and don't have a way a place to sleep. Mm. That is messed up. But again, I'm telling you, that started with what was represented in front of them. And they hooked on to it. And, 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 and our children have to learn that the greatest value they have, that they can have in life, is to value the things of God. Mm -hmm. To value the word of the Lord. To worry, not just when you hear it and know it, but that you live by it. Every day of your life. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to love your neighbors like you love yourself. For all these two laws do all the law and if they don't see you loving God, they probably not gonna love God either. I mean, I mean, really. If if they don't see you making church a priority, they go not see church as a priority. My dad made church a priority. There was no getting around it. If you if you talk about you too sick to go to church, oh, okay, you sick. That's why you stay home. At the church, was you feel like you feel that better? Oh, I, I can I go to the mood? No, oh, you too sick for God. Hey. Too sick for anything else. Hey. Guess what? Stop, stop playing like I was sick. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to the movies at the church. <laughs> but he taught me the priority that God would, if God is not important enough to go to, the movies are not nearly as important to go to. Mm -hmm. He taught me that very early, and I appreciate that. You know, and, um, and you have to hold those standards mm -hmm. where your children are concerned. You've got to live by those standards. You've got to show them what the priority is, you know, and, and, no, and, honestly, and when you've done it wrong, you gotta, you gotta go back and apologize and fix it. <coughs> Amen. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. I was asleep for one. That's the truth. When you when you do it when you do it wrong and you do it wrong in front of your kids, you need to go back to them and you need to apologize and you need to fix it. With them. Because if you don't fix it, they're gonna grow up thinking that's normal and it's acceptable. Mm -hmm. So maybe you you don't wear fair and you bought them Nikes because you just want them to go feel good about themselves and you know you need to go back and fix that because they will base their value on what they put on mm -hmm. rather than the, the character that they possess. Yeah. And now they're robbing and stealing to get the shoes that they can't afford to buy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, that. See that? Manipulating to get it. Mm -hmm. There are men out there who actually literally live off women. Oh, to get what they want. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there are women out there that will do it for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want my son to be one of those men. Mm -hmm. God forbid. I don't. I, I just don't. I want him to be a responsible young man that knows how to take care of his family. Mm -hmm. And knows how to love God. Mm -hmm. And knows how to stand his ground when he needs to. Mm -hmm. 
Oh my goodness, my time is up. Well, I didn't get, get to question number five, so <laughs> we'll just have to stop there tonight. So, but let me go back over these four questions we, we have gone through thus far. Um, question number one was, how do we struggle with live? Why do we struggle with living in this day? Number two, how do you define being an adult? Number three, how do we define being responsible? Number four, how do you define rich? Mm -hmm. And next next week we're gonna we're gonna get this last question in. Number five is how do you define life? How do you define life? Because see, all these questions are designed to make you think about how you live it every single day, so that you can learn how to enjoy this day that the Lord has given to you. Amen. Amen. Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? Comments? No. Good to see everybody tonight. Miss my boys. Y'all heard y'all been playing football. Y'all been doing well. All right. You know, you know, y'all didn't let me know, and then didn't even invite me to no games. Cause y'all know I would have came. Okay. Oh, Knoxville. Knoxville? Well, all your games were in Knoxville. Oh, some of your games were in Knoxville. Okay. Well, when you have an in-town game, y'all let me know. Okay? I would, I would like to see you guys. Play. You play basketball now? Are we all are we through with football? Mm -hmm. Really? We in the we in the basketball now? <laughs> yeah, they play basketball too. Wow, well y'all need y'all need to inform me when they doing their sports thing. I may never come out, but I want at least come to a few of them if I can and support them. Amen. Y'all want y'all want to pass on the sideline cheering y'all on? Y'all want me on the sideline cheering y'all on? Understand? Get up! I will do that. I will be loud. Mm -hmm. Y'all won't embarrass you if I be loud. I'm going to bring your, your puke and sit, sit in front of you while you're in here. Yes, when they, when they miss a call or something, the Lord has said you missed that call. <laughs> okay. I will rebuke that in Jesus' name. <laughs> no, we won't do that. <laughs> but it's good to see y'all be missing you guys. All right, y'all coming to Christmas banquet? Yes, yes y'all coming? Cool. I'm going to see you at the Christmas banquet. All right. So John will have somebody to talk to you. All right, praise the Lord. Father God, we just thank you tonight for the word, and we thank you, Father God, just for uh, just what you taught us, and, and we just pray, Father God, that you would help us to yes. really be what you called us to be, and we thank you, Father God, for just loving us. We thank you for just giving us insight and revelation of a word, Father, so that we might apply it to our everyday life. Help, help us, us, Father, to make you a priority in our lives, and that I pray that you would help your people see Lord. that you are truly the rewarder. And even as they perceive and gain that revelation, that they will diligently seek after you with all their hearts, mm -hmm. all their souls, all their mind, with all their strength. And we praise you, Father God, for tonight. Now, Father, we thank you for safe travels home for all parties here. We yes. thank you that each of us uh, will, will arrive at our destination safely and that we are covered under the blood of Jesus. Yes, and we thank you, Father God, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.